I'd like to call the Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012, City of Oldsmar Council meeting to order. At this time, our invocation, our pledge will be led by our city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask, and I'd ask you to please join me in rising. Heavenly Father, we seek blessings on the task before us, bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. We pray that our work this evening will find favor in your sight. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, again, I'd like to welcome everybody here this evening. We uh, certainly appreciate you being here on this lovely Tuesday on July 3rd, the day before Independence Day. Um, our first item on today's agenda is our Citizens Open Forum, and this gives a chance to anybody in the audience that would like to address the council. Um, we only have a few rules. First, I respectfully ask you to keep your comments to no more than five minutes. Second, please don't speak towards anything on tonight's agenda. And last, when you come up to the mic, uh, please state your name and address for the record. And with that said, does anybody want to address the council? Yes, ma'am. I think you all have a copy of what we're going to say. That way yes. I won't get messed up and... I don't have to get interrupted. <laughs> it's Donna Klanovich, 317 Fairwood Court, Oldsmar, Florida. And I'm Carla Louisa. Where are you with? <laughs> Do you want my munchies? No. I'll your house. Your um, munchies address. Munchies address, 3705 Tampa Road, Oldsmar. Okay. My name is Donna Klanovich. This is Carla Louisa. She's the owner and I'm the manager of Munchies Natural Pet Foods. Um, we are located in the old Winn-Dixie shopping plaza on Tampa Road. We've been in the same location with the same 33-inch by 16-inch open sign lit in our window for 12 years. The store is tiny, as you, most of you know, and we're fighting for our lives against the big box retailers. We're in, as you know, a dying shopping center, and if an ordinance prohibits us from having an open sign in our window, we could become the latest of failed businesses in Oldsmar. You all know the plaza and how far we sit off of Tampa Road, so an open sign is barely visible from the street, as you can see in the photos, because I did give her some photos to pass around. It isn't right that a small business has to deal with something as trivial as a lit open sign. This from a city that touts itself as being business friendly. We have enough to deal with with today's economy. We would appreciate if this council would revisit this particular code about signs. Making us take down our open sign would clearly hurt our business. We've talked to many of our customers since your code enforcement officer warned us and they all responded with the resounding, well, how do we know if you're open if the sign isn't on? As you can also see in this photo, the sign couldn't possibly divert a driver's attention from Tampa Road. It is my understanding if anyone can change or adjust this code, it would be this council. I've also included lit signs from other businesses within a couple blocks of our store. Some have open signs, others have advertising ones. I've called each business and none have been warned by the code enforcement officer. So it appears as though we have been targeted for some reason. Please look at the photos, read what I've written and see if you could do something. Thanks. If you have any questions, we would be glad to answer them. I guess my first question is, you've been in that location for 12 years with that sign mm -hmm. and nobody's bothered you until now? No. Yeah. I find that interesting. Nobody's bothering them. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. I don't know. Um, we've spoken on the phone before, but is it the, is it the sign? or I, I thought I recalled a conversation about it flashing. Was that the issue, or is it actually the sign? It doesn't flash. No, it does. It says. It does flash? Oh, it says oh I never thought. O P E N open. Open. And yeah. then it stays. We on have one for in our while. office. Yeah. Oh. And O P E N. Oh, I thought it just said. It doesn't open. go around like that. No, no, or no, no. Oh. It's oval, right? Right, yes. right, right. And I thought it just said it's open. It's just a regular LED sign, you know, plug-in sign. Yeah. It does flash. No, it doesn't flash. It just says O-P-E-N. The lights go O-P-E-N. Oh, okay. And then it stays open okay. for a while. Okay. And it does that. Okay. It's <coughs> nothing that is going to bother anybody on Tampa Road, or I wouldn't imagine it should be terrible for anybody that lives in Old Smart. Okay, well, we can do this. We've got the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce here that he's listening to you right now. I'm sure he'll get in touch with you. And we'll also ask the city manager to look in it with staff and see what we can do. Okay, appreciate okay. that. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Okay. May, I, may I make a comment? Wait, well, do you want to, Bruce, do you want to kind of explain to him why? It, I, I already I'm did. Sorry. I did that. Well, I, it, we need to do it in a public meeting. What the flashing sign, why there's an ordinance against that? 
Well, I can do that. It's not okay. I'll defer to the city attorney. Okay, that's fine. Um, I did speak to one of these ladies. I'm not sure which one of them. Well, well, we, well, we just need to get it out in the open so everybody understands what we're talking about here. Well, um, the basis of, well, first of all, the two provisions, it's my understanding, that are at issue are under prohibited signs 13.1.4, paren B, flashing signs, and paren F, electronic signs, except where, uh, when required as a traffic control device sign. That was the information that was provided to me. This is the first time I've seen the photograph, so I'm not really sure, you know, whether it flashes or it doesn't flash other than the representation that was provided to me. But the basis of the provisions of the code were a direct result of the billboard litigation that we had. I've talked to you on the telephone about that particular thing. And so um, the real issue is, is whether or not you want to make an exception for, you know, this this particular thing and my suggestion to you and, and as I mentioned to this lady on the telephone is, is that, that it would be my advice that you don't make exceptions to the sign code because I think that will open up the door. Now I don't have an issue with regard to an open sign of course. I think that that's important for them to have an open sign but the question is, is are they otherwise compliant with you know that particular code section? Well, that's okay. why I suggest. I? Yeah. Wait. Okay. I just have something to say. If you have flashing as one of the, the, it was B under the prohibited signs, you've also got F, electronic signs. This is an electronic sign. So so if you're going to tell me that to stop it flashing, then I would still be in violation by having an electronic sign. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the definition of the electronic sign with me. Well, that portion I, of the code, I, I mean, but, I kind of But it is, it, it is going to be defined, and I'm not sure if that meets the definition or not, but... Um, but we can definitely look into that and follow up. Okay. I like the only issue okay. is that it's flashing because electronic I have the floor. electronic sign sign isn't that those ones that have the different videos and everything on it? No, it's just a flashing sign. Any flashing sign is, is Any electronic. Flashing sign. I'm going to Sorry, remind Janice. the council to wait until I give the floor to them before anybody speaks. Go ahead, Jonas. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, actually, the the um, since. It has been, we won the lawsuit, we won the appeal. It's been several years since this happened. I would think it would now be prudent for us to go back. This might, this open neon thing may have just been, um, oh, what is it, a collateral, you know, when they were going through all of them, because we did, it, it was done as, as expeditiously as possible, if I remember back then. And I think, even even the Historical Society, we have an open sign. It just, it just has a round thing and it says open. That's all. It doesn't flash O-P-E-N, it just says open. And we would like to put one in the window too so people know when we are open. And I think maybe we could go back and revisit this. Well, in a way, that's what we're doing. I'm asking the chamber to get involved with the city manager and the staff well, to I mean, see, yeah, what, but the see code, what's what. Yeah, yeah. but they, they have to, well. well we're not going to solve it right now. No, no, right no, here. no, no. But, so, yeah. but I mean, I think that at least so, whether it flashes or not, I, I, don't, I don't know. But I, I would think that an open sign, it, I mean, they've had open signs for 100 years. You know, well, we're not I mean, even asking to be an exception. We don't want to be an exception. We just want, and Mr. Trask told me if anybody can change it, it would be speaking before you guys. And that's what we're doing. Right. Um, it's going to be up to you. I don't know what the Chamber of Commerce has anything to do with anything. Well, um, but, um, you know, it's an open sign. We don't care if we stop it from flashing or saying open. We just kind of resent the fact that you know, we were kind of picked on. We were, we were well, picked think, out of a lot that, of places. I don't think that's there's, the case. I think. Uh, well, there's three other places in our same center that have open signs, and they weren't targeted. They weren't. And again, like I said, if you're going to say no signs, no electronic signs, then you've got to outlaw every single electronic sign in Oldsmar. Right, good. Well, just a couple of things that you need to clear my head. Well, just uh, first of all, about the electronic signs, that is typically a sign, or it's more perhaps commonly referred to as a digital sign, where it's print, and the print is either scrolling or flashing. Animated. Walgreens has it. We cash checks. But uh, So that's typically would be what an electronic sign is. The well, open my sign, understanding I understand electronic you plug it in. plug in. 
but I don't think it would be electronic under our Well, maybe we need to address the verbiage of it, you know, of how it's going to be put in there, you know? Well, we're going we're gonna to ask staff to look into it, and they'll, okay. get, they'll get with us and you, and uh, we'll try to get to it. Good, I want to move on from the fire. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, I want to make sure I understand the issue. Because when I read this, it says, keeping us from having an open sign, this thing that doesn't say anything about flashing will keep us from failing. Are they not allowed to have an open sign? Yes. I know you're saying for staff to, they are allowed or they are not allowed? They have an open sign. They can have an open sign. Yes, they are. And I, I guess I'm flashing. I think it's the flashing. Okay, the well, you, Mr. Trask, you told me it's a sign, a sign that lights up. That's what you told me on the phone. That's why I kind of got my hackles up a little bit. The fact that I was, I was you reading have from this that right. was in front of me at the time, electronic sign. So if okay. I think we'll, so hey, if it, electronic. We'll get somebody out there and take a look at it. We'll try to help you as best we can. Okay. And I, it, just in reference, I know the animated. The animated. It's like Tate, uh, famous Tate, Tate had they put one, and they spent a couple thousand dollars. They hung it under their sign, and it it scrolled a lot, like you see. And mm -hmm. the code. And for, I mean, it was down within a week. They weren't allowed to have. And it's it. happened with the pawn st the pawn stars uh, also. We better take those. They down. sit so far back, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah, they're like so the only ones back, there. Yeah. Now. Right. right. <laughs> we'll try to get to the bottom of it for you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to address the council? Sherry yes. Custom, Virginia Bay Chamber of Commerce, 101 State Street, and I'll give you my card and we'll uh, give it to you Thursday. We'll try to do something. I just uh, want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Uh, we we kind of go a little bit slower in, uh, in July, but I uh, do want to remind everybody that this Saturday you have a very special thing. First thing, to, uh, first time we're going to do it, and we hope it uh, winds up being a, an annual thing. Guns and Hoses, where uh, our fire department is going to have a blazing wing eat off against the uh, our police department at Buffalo Wild Wings, and the proceeds will go to charities as selected by the police and the fire. And Mayor Veronica and uh, Mayor Steingo will be the judges of that. And I believe the uh, eat off starts at two o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, generally, uh, what what I heard is to, to tag you, as I told Tom. Generally, it's a tag team, but uh, Chief O'Neill told me he's been practicing, <laughs> and uh, and they've uh, got the rules changed where it's going to be one big bowl of wings. They each get 36 wings, six guys, and whoever gets done the wings first. So it'll be exciting. And again, if you come here and eat, uh, I think anytime afternoon uh, at Buffalo Wild Wings, part of the proceeds go to charity. So I think that's from 11. I think 11, 11 to it? three. Yeah, yeah, 11, 11, 11 to three. three. I guess it is. Yeah, 11 10 percent. 11 to 3 in the uh, wing, wings are 2. Yep. The other thing we have is the following weekend, uh, July 4th at Bright House Field, we have a charity softball game between uh, city council members and, uh, and chamber board members against, uh, again, the police. Uh, that'll be our third annual of that. Uh, that's a real nice thing. Uh, $17, you get into the game. The Threshers game that follows that, uh, free, uh, or you can, not free, but all you can eat hot dogs, hamburgers, and things for first five innings of the Threshers game, and, as uh, well as fireworks afterwards. And $5 of that will go to holiday sharing. So we get uh, a couple hundred people out there to that. We'll make $1,000 for holiday sharing. So, great happy fourth. Thanks a lot. This city council? Yeah. You bet. <laughs> no you have at least three well, I'm the only one going to practice lately. <laughs> you have at least three members of the city council who are going to be playing. Nice. Is there anyone else that wants to address the council? <laughs> nobody? Seeing nobody else, I will close the citizens open forum. Our first item under our council uh, agenda is our consent docket. Tonight we've only got one item, and that's to approve the minutes of May 15, 2012 city council meeting. Does anybody want to question or pull it? Nope. No, no, I'll take a motion. I'll move. Have a second. second. Got a motion second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. First item under City of Oldsmar is the presentation of the National Merit Scholarship recipient, and I'm doing that. With me here is um, Neil, Neil Ma Mandel, Mandel, and Neil is um, a special a special kid here in uh, Oldsmar. He's done a remarkable job academically, and he's the recipient of the National Merit Scholarship Award. And back in 2010, I guess when you were a junior, 1.5 million students competed for the 2012 National Merit Scholarship. Um, to be the National Scholar, Neil had to score among the top 16,000 on the PSAT then be selected through a state represent representation method to become one out of 15,000. 
Then he had to be selected through an application process involving recommendation letters, essays, extracurricular involvement. I don't know why I can't talk today. <laughs> I've not been able to talk all day. And academic records to be one of the 8,300 merit scholars. Well, Neil's SAT scores was 2,360. A perfect score is 2,400. So that's pretty amazing. Math a little bit more, no. <laughs> Neil has not decided on a major that we will likely be studying political science and economics as a student at Georgetown's Walsh School of Foreign Service. And currently that's uh, Berkeley Prep is where he goes to school now, so. Neil, this is the Certificate of Academic Achievement. Be it known on this day, Neil Mandel has been presented the Certificate of Academic Achievement in recognition of having achieved the title of Merit Scholar dated this July 3rd, Jim Roniker Mayor. Congratulations. Hi, um, hello everyone, I'm Neil. Just like to thank my parents for uh, all their support and definitely for all my friends and neighbors here in Oldsmar. I've also been a very you know, supportive community. And thanks to the city council for uh, awarding this to me today and recognizing all my work. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job, Neil. Congratulations. Can I add something, Mayor? Absolutely. Also, what is even more remarkable is, I mean, to be a National Merit Scholar is remarkable. My nephew was a semi-finalist, but he didn't make it to finalist. And it, it's out of one and a half million kids in the country. And um, only nine kids, tell me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Neil, nine kids in the entire Pinellas County, and you're the only, you're the only one in Oldsmar. Is that correct? That's correct. And did all of the other eight become finalists? Because they were the semifinalists, and so that's that. I mean, think about how many students are in this county, and all the work that you've had to do all these years in order to get this. It is quite an honor. So, congratulations. We wish you the best. Good job. Next up is uh, consider the reappointment of Frank Giacolo to the Board of Adjustment. Frank, come on up. Mayor, I have a lot of questions for Frank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know the routine. We did this, now it's probably right. four or five years ago, um, where the council didn't know who we were putting on the boards, and we thought it would be good to bring that person in front of us so we could meet you and you know, know who you are. I think everybody knows who you are. Um, as I always want to say, you know, thank you for your service on this board and the other boards that you serve on. We're greatly appreciated. Um, anybody have any questions for Frank? Yes, sir. I have, no, I have a question. I have a comment. F Frank goes beyond our boards here in the city of Osmore. He goes to the veterans of the west coast of Florida. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for that. If any veteran needs help with this government that we have that's so complicated anymore, go to Frank, call Gus Bilirakis' office, and say, I want to talk to Frank. And Frank is the guy that helps you if you're a veteran and you need help through the complexity. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they've been listening to you because I've probably done more Osmar in the last hmm. six months than... Great. Any other area. So I'm glad the veterans are getting out there and they're coming over. That's good. So again, thank you for serving. And uh, I need a motion to approve Frank on the board. So Got moved. It. Have a second. Got a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Frank. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Next up is the, the reappointment of Jim Mason to the planning board. Jim, come on up. I'll save my spiel that I just gave for Frank. Again, we want to thank you for your service on this board, this important board. I don't know if you have any questions for us, or I don't know. Do you know everybody on the council? I do. I've been on the planning board since 2000, so I've seen you guys a few times. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> he, he, he can almost call us by name. <laughs> Only because you have the plaque in front. Right. <laughs> it always right. helps. I need, an, I need a motion to appoint uh, Jim to the board. So I have a second? Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Jim. Thank you, sir. Next up, we've got city attorney. 
Okay, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, item number five, second reading in public hearing of Ordinance 2012-08. I'll read it by title only. Ordinance 2012-08, an ordinance of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, vacating portions of Clarendon Street from the previously vacated portion of Clarendon Street to School Street and School Street between St. Petersburg Drive and approximately 203 feet north of Arlington Avenue providing for an effective date hereof. That was the second and final reading of Ordinance 2012-08 by title only. Thank you very much. I have a motion for Ordinance 2012-08. So moved. I have a second. Second. I've got a motion and a second. This is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public wish to address the council on this ordinance? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Anyone on council? Call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Beaverland? Absolutely, yes. Council Member Miller? Aye. Council Member Beavis? Aye. Council Member Norris? Yes. Mayor Ronecker? Aye. Second reading of Ordinance 2012-08, vacating portions of School Street and Clarendon Street, is passed with five votes for and zero against. Mr. Mayor, sir, before you go to the next one, I know that you don't want to give up your seat, but whoever makes the motion, make the motion in place of the mayor. In place because, of the mayor. We're getting mean? Technicar because of some of his reactions and some of his actions and some of the city clerk, oh, uh, the yeah. city manager's actions. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so, so whoever makes the motion, they're making the motion because of you. Oh, no. Motion. <laughs> yeah. However, you guys want to put it that down in the minutes. I've got the motion. Do I have no, a I, I need what? to read the ordinance. Oh, we got to do that first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> A little shortcut there. <laughs> yeah. All There's right. No public hearing. So this is item number six. First reading in public hearing of ordinance 2012-09. Ordinance 2012-09, an ordinance declaring the intention of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, annex real property located in section 13, Township 28 South, Range 16 East, more specifically described in Exhibit A, into the corporate limits of the City of Oldsmar and annexing said property into the corporate limits of the City of Oldsmar and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. That was the first reading of ordinance 2012-09 by title only. Well read, by the way. Thank you. So I have a motion for ordinance 2012-09. So moved. Got the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Got the motion a second. This is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public wish to discuss this ordinance with the council? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Anyone on council? Nope. Just a comment that um, how many years have we been after these people? Mm -hmm. Forever. <laughs> 20 that I know yeah. of. But he did it. What, it. what it is, it's a big commercial property here in the city that uh, now we've only got one left, maybe two. Depending on how you look at it. So yes. We've got our eyes on. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, I've got the motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Council Member Beaverland? Yes. Council Member Miller? Aye. Council Member Beavis? Aye. Council Member Norris? Yes. Mayor Ronecker? Aye. First reading of Ordinance 2012 09, annexing Technicars, approved with five votes for and zero against. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. The next item. Consider approval of a contract with the Palm Harbor Oldsmar Local 2980 IAFF Unit 2 Firefighter Supervisors. This contract would cover the period ending September 30th of 2013. There are four employees included in the supervisor's unit. And uh, those employees have voted on the proposed contract and it was ratified last Friday and not in uh, included in the packet, but I did pass out this evening a letter from the District Vice President Jason Schwabe, who is also here this evening, stating that it has been ratified by the Unit 2 membership. There were 14 articles revised from the previous contract. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those unless you have some questions about them. So tonight I am recommending that the Council approve the contract with Local 2980 of the International Association of Firefighters for Unit 2 Firefighter Supervisors. There is one other thing I need to point out to the Council that there was a sentence left out of Article 37, Vacation Leave, and if you look at the contract, it would be page 53. It's not a new provision. It was in the old contract and uh, just left out of Article 37. Section 2, there's another sentence that would be item E, and that states, employees holding the rank of captain will be given an additional two hours of annual leave each month. And uh, the IFF is aware of that, and that, like I said, is not a new provision. It was in the previous contract. I want to point that out to Council. Two hours additional per month? 
employees holding the rank of captain, yes, will be given an additional two hours of annual leave each month. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to respond to those. I recommend approval of the contract. Okay, thank you. Jason, do you want to say anything? Or? <clears throat> Jason Schwabe, DBP Oldsmar, Local 2980, 1119 Illinois Avenue, Palm Harbor. Um, just uh, happy to be to this point. I don't think any of us enjoyed being uh, almost two years into a three-year contract, but I think we've come to a fair conclusion. You know, to uh, hope that you vote for this contract. I uh, certainly appreciate the patience and support council has given us, you know, along the process. And we'll uh, be able to take, take the uh, next 10 months off before we go at it again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll get through it a little quicker next time for you. I'd like to so. ask you one question. Sure. Was it an adventure you, you enjoyed? Um, some of the time. An interest in adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always a learning process. This was my first time as a lead negotiator. And, you did well. And I think, uh, you know, with anything, you're always learning as you go. So um, hopefully that'll translate into the next one when we get around you're to it. You're prepping yourself for the president of the union. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the president is the guy who really has the... <laughs> yeah. It has been a learning adventure. That's though. great. Yeah, it did take a while, but... Glad we got where we are. Is it official? I, mine's not signed. I don't know. He didn't sign it. So I don't know. <laughs> it is an electronic copy. Oh, it is. It is yeah. not signed. I, I, I heard from him. Oh, okay. Yeah, very happy that uh, it worked out. It is great because I don't think a year ago any of us knew where we were going to be with uh, this. So it's, yeah. it's awesome. You did. So, like, again, thank you for your, you know your patience and support and throughout the process. And thank everybody at Oldsmar Fire Rescue for all they do because we are greatly appreciative. <laughs> I need a motion to approve the contract with the Oldsmar Palm Harbor Local 2980. So moved. Uh, second. second. Got the motion second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. Finally done. Thank you. Mayor and Council, the next item, consider approval of the use agreement with Oldsmar BMX Incorporated. This is for the BMX facility located at Canal Park, and the uh, use agreement is for one year period. It would begin on July 3 and run through June 30th of 2013. The proposed agreement before you this evening is uh, the same as last year's agreement, other than, of course, the dates have been changed. So I do recommend that you approve the agreement with Oldsmar BMX Incorporated for 2012 and 13. Uh, the question would be BMX was okay with the contract? They didn't. Yes, I, they're, they're fine with it. I know they hadn't signed it yet, but I don't think there's any outstanding issues. Okay. Nobody here from BMX that wants to address the council? All right. I'll take a motion to approve the uh, BMX contract. So moved. Have a second? Got it. Got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 9, select preferred firm and authorize the city manager to negotiate a contract for financial advisor. We received two proposals. The council authorized advertising on May 1st. These were evaluated by the staff, and the recommended firm is the PFM Group. Upon conclusion of negotiations, should the council uh, authorize that this evening, the contract would come back for your consideration at a later meeting. Tonight, I am asking that the council approve the recommendation to negotiate a contract with the PFM Group for financial advisory services. And Bruce, can I just ask you to take a second and just explain exactly what we're going to have them do, as you did to me this morning? Sure. The primary thing would be related to any bond financing, and one of the things we'll ask them to look at is the possibility or the feasibility of refinancing the outstanding debt from Veterans Memorial Park. That bond issue is, uh, I think it was about issued 10 years ago, and there could be uh, any future bond issues or debt that the city might issue. There's none on the immediate horizon. Um, and also we may ask them to review our investment policy in that uh, it's never been reviewed by an outside party. We've put it together ourselves and it's been in place for a number of years. On the uh, debt side, they're only paid if there's an actual bond issue closes. If they review the investment policy, then we would pay them for that particular piece of work or that work task. All right. Thank you for that. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. The uh, I'm going to support this, but I think we've had uh, 
we've had great uh, financial advisors right here in our city. I think so, too. With Bruce and Al. Mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. compliment both of them. They just want to double check themselves. And I was—I had some. I'm not going to share it right now, but Bruce shared some really nice news about the water treatment plant where we are with the financing and how ahead of the game we are. So yeah. we'll talk about that another time. But uh, I think this is a good idea. It's always good to get another set of eyes on something, mm -hmm. and you might be missing something. And mm -hmm. we don't pay them unless they find us. That a was savings. just to say that. Yeah. You're right. So um, I need a motion to accept the P F M group. You got it. I have a second. Got a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk. You got something, yes. <laughs> I do have something. Um, item number 10 is report on the paperless agenda. And that was part of the last council meeting, or actually a council meeting before that. Um, and so we looked at the different qualities of going paperless and what it would mean with the functionality. We're in here, you know, we're looking at the iPad 16 gigabyte, which had, would have 16 gigabytes of memory, and that would hold almost 900 packets before it's even half full of, with the memory. So mm. you would, what would happen is you'd download it in, and it would be there. It's incredible. <laughs> and there's iAnnotate, which would allow you to make notes. And so instead of recycling, you could actually go back and look at previous packets and what you wrote in your comments and, and, and you know, di different things like that. So it has high functionality in that regard. Um, historically, uh, when there's been issues with emails, is when the council member e have, have problems with the emails, it's become a little bit of a problem for city staff to diagnose. Using the iPads for emails would make that much easier. Uh, we looked at the costs, and the initial outlay for the iPads covers would be $3,300. And as far as actual production, what, the difference between producing it electronically and producing it on um, paper is about the same. So as far as continuing on in the maintenance, there's very little difference in the cost, but the initial outlay, of course, is different. Uh, where it would really help us in streamlining the process right now, because we have one foot in the paper world and one foot in the digital world, we're scanning it three times. We're making two copies, and that's to satisfy all these different versions of the packet that we have. That requires five employees after the fi city manager's final review, and we could actually take that down to two employees would be involved. It would save the city clerk's office eight hours a month, and uh, those are the pros and cons involved. But based on all of those, we would recommend going forward if the, and the, the council would approve that motion. It's really a tough pill for me to swallow. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> tough wad of paper, huh? For you. Yeah. In case you don't know, I own a commercial printing company, so <laughs> oh. this technology is putting me out of business. Oh. Um, I, I, Who's going to You know, te the way technology is changing, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem. There is, a, you know, an initial capital outlay that we've got to put out, but the cost, you know, the, the cost does come back on the positive side in a year or two. Um, my only apprehension that I can think of is what if the, uh, what if the net network is down? And we're here in a meeting, and we don't have anything. What are we? What are, oh what's our backup plan for that? We could always print if the network is down somehow, but it would be out there and pushed to your iPads. You so you'd you have to load it on Friday. As after you the know. Friday, after it's done on Friday. So it's not live be, on the. We're not picking it up live on the internet or anything like that. It's already oh. embedded on it by Friday night okay. or Friday evening. I, I have a question. Yeah. Who, who's going to teach us how to use it? <laughs> oh, there's definitely going to be a learning curve for it. Yeah. For me, there is. Um, well, we could show you how as well as IT, and we would go through the processes and make sure everything is, you know, as as easy as possible. User friendly. User friendly. Yes. Yeah. Now, what would be the um, what would be issues as far as the city owning the the tablet for like I guess it's called a tablet, right? The city owning the tablet, we're doing personal stuff on it as well. Does that become public records? How does that work? You don't do personal. Uh, well, first of all, I would suggest that you not do personal work, but uh, the answer to the question is, is that was litigated in the Clearwater, uh, City of Clearwater case, and that personal stuff would remain personal. It does remain personal. Right. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Say that again. Personal stuff does remain personal. Right. Why, why would you... So, in, in other words, personal? would I be able to put, if I'm using the emails for the city, at the same time, can I put my other company emails on the tablet? And those remain personal? I would suggest not because the fact that, you know, the city is actually paying for it. Uh, you know, if it is something that is done on an uh, intermittent basis, not very often, I think you've got the protections. But I think that the longer you use it for personal 
aspects of it and the, and the city actually paying for it, the city paying to update it. I think that the, you're, there's a likelihood um, that, you know, that may come into question. So I would suggest that you not do that, keep it separate and apart. Well, the mayor brought up, a, you know, I'm the one that brought this up some time ago, but I can see, I, I can see having these things, if you have them in your personal possession, they can become very dangerous. If, if I get one, I'm leaving it right here at City Hall. That way I, I, I know that I'm not going to put anything on it or something's going to be put on there that i got to answer for sooner or later. I'm not going well, to do you it. do your email on it, though. I mean, when I, people I, write to us. I, 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 I don't do emails now on the, uh, very seldom do I, do I send an email on the city email system. Well, I have a question. Too, would we still be able to use our desktops at home if we chose to do our email on, or would it, uh, at oh, home, yeah. or would it only be on no. the tablet? And accessible both ways. Accessible both ways, okay. You can even do it from your phone. <laughs> right. Well, that technology doesn't change. Um, what if the council were to own the, the tablet themselves? <laughs> um, hey, Adam. I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, <laughs> my boss told me to come up and address these questions. Adam Shore, City of Oldsmar, IT Administrator. Um, if you had your own tablet or your own smartphone and you wanted to access your email or the packet, we could also arrange that. Email is pretty simple. Just bring your tablet or smartphone to my office and uh, I'll set you up in about five minutes. Having a tablet does not stop you from accessing it on your desktop computer or any well, other well, computer. Excuse me, Mayor. You're, you're talking to a dinosaur here. <laughs> Define tablet for me. Tablet is if you had any device like an iPad or um, I'm trying to think of one of its competitors, but I don't a know. Google's got right there. Laptop. Yeah, a tablet is a uh, is yeah, 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 yeah. But there are other competitors. There are other smart tablets out there. There's um, Google just released one. Okay. Microsoft just okay. released I, one. I understand now. Any of those handheld devices that um, can access email over the internet, we can set up to access your email. And I have an Asus, which is a, it, it has a keyboard attached to it that you can take off and on. It's easier. So if we have our own tablet, would it be okay if we just used our own tablet? If, if you have your own tablet, I can configure the email for you, for the city email, or I can send you the information to configure It's yourself. only going to be for email and council packets, and We right? could email you the packet in a PDF format, just like we would push it using the iCloud to the, to the, iTunes, or the iCloud to your iPad. Um, we could just email you it as an attachment, and you could use it on your personal tablet if you had that right now. Uh, the tablet yeah. looks kind of small. I'm concerned I'm not going to be able to read anything on the thing. You can expand it mm -hmm. with your fingers, make it bigger. I'm glad uh, you uh, know about it. Huh? <laughs> well, I have one. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the implications, uh, uh, what the consequences are for using city email on your personal uh, device. Yeah, that probably won't uh, be a good maybe idea. Mr. That's Trask could answer I mean, that, I, but I that's use, the only other question I would I have. I use city email right now on my personal computer because there's right. no other way to get no, city email. So. Right, well, me too. The city's not furnishing me a computer at my house or at my business, so, you know, everything multi Yes, me too. Well, this is just for discussion anyway, so. It doesn't take that long to learn it because I'm, I am like not very smart electronically at all, and my niece and nephew taught me how to use mine. So it, it's not that hard. And they're two and three years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this you think of all the paper it'll save. Staff is recommending approval of going forward with this, correct? Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah, so they're asking us to take action. I mean, I think for continuity and as Ann said, for the, the multiple ways that they got to produce this crazy thing, if we can yeah. do our part to come in line with it. I mean, look, we just built this beautiful facility with technology and, you know, and we're you know still GBC buying in reports. Yeah, we're still. I mean, I'm sure countries. we'll still get handouts and stuff, right? <laughs> on particular items as needed. Well, some things. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that can and be sent to us too. Yeah. We we'll leave photos, and you know, sometimes we get some of these photos where you can't tell what it is. Will those be enhanced now because we're going digitally? If we're looking at a photo of something, Probably. or a property, or. You would, if you had like a map or a JPEG image, you'd be able to zoom in on it in the tablet as opposed to having <laughs> a scan in the picture. Yeah, I was showing us a picture of his car. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Now that we get like the whole fleet. You say with that thing on Vegas. And also, wouldn't in the long run, the, the hours that we're saving and the paper that we're saving and everything eventually overcome the initial outlay? Would the savings eventually catch up? 
Yeah, in a couple of years. A few years. Yep. Yeah. Well, not only that, it frees them to do other stuff, you know, that maybe we're yes. not getting to. Um, uh, I, I think I, I would be more receptive if the councils owned their own iPads themselves rather than the city own them. But, you know, I don't understand they're expensive, so maybe there's a way that, you know, we can work it out where they just take X amount of dollars out every month from your check that you get, the little check that you get, to pay for it, and then you own it. I would go along with that. Yeah. Owned I would one prefer to own instead it. Instead of the see a problem with that. I don't. I don't. I think that's better for the city. The city attorney might I, have a problem. I, that's a good idea. Them. But you got to keep about five hundred dollars a piece or something. What are they? Six. Six hundred. I was just going to say. Well, I, I'm sure Bruce and Al could get a cheap, uh, uh, could a get better a, rate. But uh, I mean, if they take fifty or seventy-five dollars out of your check every month or something, you pay for it in four or five months, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> that's a good get idea. A better rate too. That's possible, but I would I would be more receptive to do that where we owned it ourselves, rather than being responsible. You know, I mean, again, what what if you drop it? Who's responsible for that then? Well, well they're insured. insured. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be as Jerry said. I'm not going to be using mine a lot because I don't want to intermix. That's the same reason I don't check emails on my phone is because I don't want to. Well, that's a part of the reason is to have it is to have quicker access to have your emails separate. as well. But just city stuff, not to. Right. Not to be right. I would just keep it separate too. Yeah. I don't care either way. Well, well y'all know I'm a dinosaur, so however y'all want to go, I'm for it. You're good on the computer, though. Well, then we could do this. We can start moving forward with it, and um, we could work out the details. Okay. You know, down the road, after we get concrete prices and this and that, and I think the prices are pretty firm. Are they? Yes. Yeah. I the the city gets a very slight um, pricing advantage on oh, yeah. on the iPad. Um, Apple doesn't like to give a break to to many people, but we do get a pretty significant um, price break on the data plan from Verizon. So we would be on Verizon's wireless network. It's forty dollars for unlimited access, which um, only governments can get. Now you couldn't walk into the store and get that right now. So good question, if we're going to be on Verizon and we don't have Verizon at home, are we going to have, and we don't have wireless throughout the city, it, how it would, are we going to have access? It would be Verizon wireless network. So as long as you're in the area that Verizon's wireless network yeah, covers, I it have, doesn't matter oh, if you have a bright house or anything like that at home, you would be on their cellular towers. And the new hotspot. iPads are 4G compatible. They're super fast. Mm -hmm. So how do we know if we live in an area that has it? Um, I get you the Verizon map, uh, but it pretty much covers almost all of Florida. We've oh, yet okay. to we've yet to run into a uh, a dead spot with any of, since we've switched. Side note: since we switched to Verizon wireless phones from another provider, we've yet to run into a dead spot. I've yet to run into a dead spot with the data with it. So um, I'm pretty confident. You know, if you live here in Old Smart, you're gonna okay. get signal. Mm -hmm. I, I have Verizon at home anyway. I have Verizon mm -hmm. wireless. So if somebody damages it, it's covered under insurance? Yes. Yeah, and I'm not completely opposed to that because, it, I mean, we have reoccurring elections. We're going to have one next March, and so there are going to be new people. Then they got to go out and buy new ones or however we do it. And well, they're only, they're only going to be good for two or three years anyway before they're integrated. <laughs> you know? They're not going to last that long. That is pretty much the lifespan of technology. Right. Yeah. Two, three years. Terrible. So, you know, I don't even know if you ever re really do recoup your costs that you're going to outlay, but sure. if it speeds things up, I'm all for it. I don't necessarily know that it will speed things up. I, if there's a learning curve and somebody's at the meeting, they can't keep up with what's going on on the tablet. Um, oh, I, I, don't think, I see issues. I don't think we're that, that bad, are we? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, even I'm not that bad. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, yes. Adam, you would we also okay. have would we also have the capabilities to have the agenda like we used to have it? Sometimes we'd have it on the video. So what if our iPads went down? Well, we, we'd, we'd, your, your screens in front of you now only show what's on the displays there. We pulled the PCs out of this room um, a long time ago because yes. they weren't being used. And to switch between the screens turned out to be um, a major inconvenience so at the time of planning we thought it would be a lot easier. So the only way to have both would be to have like Anne has two displays. And that would be the only way, two displays. Uh, one display of hers is dedicated okay. to the feed that you see up there, and the other one is dedicated to a PC. So we took those PCs out. They've been redeployed throughout the city, but we could always get another PC and another monitor if that was the desire. Well, we could always go forward with it, and then if it, if it is an issue and we're, we're not doing well with them, I guess we could take those and give them to the department heads that could use them and 
go back to paper. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. actually, we're the only ones in town. <laughs> my suggestion was that uh, if you approve it, that the city would go ahead and buy them, and they would be you know assigned to each of the five council members, and then somewhere down the road. If you decided to do something different or have your own or whatever, then they would just be re reassigned to an employee. So it wasn't like we're right. throwing the money away. All right. But that way, everybody would be starting out with the same thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I agree with that. But I'm, I'm, I'm more leaning towards each individual council member owning their own. Yes. But then whenever Under elections, everybody would have to one. buy one. The new members saying. would have to buy one. Well, oh, yeah. If you wanted to decide that later on. Yeah, yeah. We can do that. Sure. Yeah, okay. Is everybody good with that? Yeah. And then and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll just go back to paper, basically. <laughs> could happen. Yeah. It'll work. It could happen. But hopefully it won't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So do right. I need a motion for that? or does the We discussion would ask good that enough? you have a motion to authorize the staff with proceed with implementing electronic council packets. Okay, I need a motion for what he just said. I'll, <laughs> I'll move for that. Okay. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? <laughs> you're the one that started this. <laughs> Dear, all, you're the one that started it? I'm all yeah. sorry. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. <clears throat> we're going paperless. It really is a tough pill for me to swallow. <laughs> It's going, uh, it's going anything else? Mayor, it's just, going to be a tough pill for me to learn. <laughs> just to note that um, beginning July 10th, the supervised election will be mailing approximately 225,000 ballots to domestic voters who have requested the ballots to date, and that would be for the primary coming up in August. So, if, uh, yeah, just kind of quick. Know. Yeah. All right. Anything else? That's it. Thank you very much. Under City Council, we've got uh, Council Member Miller put this on the Adopt the Resolution 2012-10 regarding state funding for the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. And Tom, do you need to read that resolution? Yes, I do. <clears throat> resolution 2012-10, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar in opposition to Governor Rick Scott's veto of the funding for the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council and providing for an effective date. That was reading a resolution 2012-10 by title only. All right, Janice, did you want to add anything? Because I know the last discussion... Uh, Vice Mayor Beaverlin was opposed to this. I support it, so I'm good with it. Um, Thanks. Um, yeah, the, for the last two years, he has vetoed it, and, and we've been working on, they've been paying staff and everything on money that they, so they're very prudent with their money, you know. And without that, I mean, what would you do without the Tampa Bay estuary and all that stuff? And what would you do with all these projects they do? I mean, well, they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot. Preparedness yeah, they like do that, a yeah. lot of stuff, you know. And and I just, you know, thought that that he, we should send him a, you know, a nudge. Who was do you it, think was you it, are? Was it each <laughs> planning council? Yes. Gets the same funding. Oh, or does it I don't work know. By about that. population, do you know? They're going to combine. I, I don't know them. how that works. I think that uh, they can't. County, the counties. They can't. The contribution from counties is based on their population, so I would assume that it does vary. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mayor, I, I don't know the answer to that. The, the dues, I think, is that what you were? Referencing? No, no, no. I'm talking about the fund. Like I think Pinellas County lost a million dollars. Is that the mm -hmm. figure? Uh, something like that. Or not Pinellas County, I should say the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. Like oh, a yeah. A million dollars. Oh, yeah. No, we haven't, uh, we just haven't gotten any more money. Right, We're but down was, at the end now. What, what he vetoed was a million dollars going to the yes. TPRC. Yes. I don't know what Miami Dade's one is called, but whatever theirs is, was it their conglomeration. Are they getting a million also? I, I don't know. Okay. It's 2.5 million. Is what we didn't get? We did not get. For one year or for both years? Uh, e each year we're supposed to get it. Oh. And so they've been operating on two years of 2.5, you know, and paying their help and everything like that, too. And uh, and we're down to the, the nitty gritty now, you know, and we're hoping that, you know, in the next session maybe he'll, especially if he gets something like this from all the planning councils, that He'll go ahead and say, yeah, all right, you know. Mr. Vice Mayor. Who knows? Well, he's not going to say yay, but. Um, all he can say is no. Was. We can try. Was they, was they, or weren't they going to try to combine them somehow, Bruce? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Well, at one time, yeah, yeah, they were. there's been, uh, or maybe more than once, proposals to merge, merge regional planning councils with the water management districts. Oh, that was um, a long time ago. 
I don't know that that's ever no. picked up much steam. No, we, I've never even heard of it, and I've been on it for 10 okay, years. Well, let me say this. That'd be a bad idea. I do not, I do not support the TBRPC. I, I served on that for four years. I was on the executive board for two years. Uh, but I tell you, I, I am going to support Councilman, Council Lady Miller on her recommendation, but I am not going to support the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. I will support the resolution. what you want to do. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. See? Nice Two-step there. <laughs> yeah. Any, anybody else? <laughs> All right. I've got, uh, I had you read it. I need a motion to uh, I'll adopt make, resolution. I'll even make the motion under oh, protest. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'll second it. All right. I've got the motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And since we're with comments by council members, we'll start with you. Me? You. Oh, okay. If you and don't have a lot. This is, <laughs> no, I, I really don't have a lot, actually. Um, <clears throat> and I'm really going to kind of address it to Frank. Um, last meeting, there was, a, a, was it Tony Gross was here with a man named Don Carey. And I don't know if you watched the council meeting, but they're having on August 18th at at uh, the park. You you knew about that? I, okay. I noticed that one, one of the sponsors is the DFW over the holiday. Ah. And, uh, Frank, you might need to come up to the podium so everybody can hear you on record. Thanks. Thank you. I've been getting emails from the different BSOs, and one of the sponsors was over there in uh, Holiday, which was the VFW. Uh -huh. Post 10167. Okay. So uh, okay. that's all I know about it. I know they came over to me during our <laughs> event at East Lake High School and was talking about something about having an event here at the park, and that's about all. Okay. If you will come and take this, please. I am asking. This, this man... Um, <coughs> His lost his son, the one that was with Tony. Uh, lost his son in '04, but he didn't move to Oldsmar until '05, and he does live down, you know, Bayside there. And uh, I'm asking that you make an exception and put his son on the wall. Okay. And even though he himself didn't live here, his parents do. Is that okay? All right. Okay, so there's the information. I don't have his phone number. Do you have his phone number? You know what? You can get it from the water department, I think. Or well, Ann or Kathy Ann can it. get it yeah. for you, or, or, but, or Kathy can get it for you. Anyway. <laughs> but she's going to put it on your agenda. <laughs> <laughs> right. Agenda, right. Okay. For prior to the Veterans Day okay. ceremony, because yes. we we'll probably have some more we have to approve. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So because yeah. I, I, just, I just felt kind of bad when he came up with, with Tony and, and everything has been done for Tony's son. And here this man lives here and, you know, nobody's recognized his son. And I think it's, right. I, it's I a huge... A couple in the past that we, we approved that we've uh, outside yeah. of the city uh, limits. Wonderful. Some old timers, a time or two, yeah, yeah. Thank but, you but that's the whole so reason why much. we set up the board, too. Right. Uh, uh, on the same vein, do they have the uh, World War One? Are they going to consider them? Yeah, they will have them, so they'll have them for that the meeting World as well. With those applications. Okay. I think it's a good thing. Okay, and the, the only other thing I have is have a happy Fourth of July, everybody, and don't drink and drive. All right, thank you, Councilmember Norris. Um, I just have a couple things. I just wanted to um, say a few things about this recent flood. I wasn't um, aware at first that our website was so informative on um, things that the citizens could, whenever there's a storm. I didn't know, but there was um, piles of sand, shovels, and sandbags available because I ended up having to sandbag my house. So I just wanted to say that in case anybody else didn't know that because some Oldsmar residents I know before I even knew about the sandbag pile um, were going and buying mm -hmm. them from um, Home Depot. So it's just a really good thing and a really good practice to you know, to check the website whenever there's any kind of thing like that in Oldsmar because there's so many you know good mm -hmm. things available to us. So I was real and and I wanted to commend city all of the, all the whole night the whole two nights I saw staff everywhere yes. sandbagging things do, fixing sewer pipes doing everything and it was 
I, I heard that they worked 24 seven during that time. Mm -hmm. And I saw it with my own eyes because I was having to do it myself. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to warn people, I never realized, I mean, people tell you all the time, don't go in floodwaters, don't go in floodwaters. And yeah. in the process of sandbagging my house, I was in the floodwaters. I was in a couple feet here and there and everything else. And I came down with two infections that two antibiotics didn't cure both of them. The, the last infection, I just had to go to the hospital for last night and have it like you don't even want to go you don't even want to have to go that far but it was all because the emergency room even told me that that during flood times there's so many different kinds of infections that you can get I'm thinking Tampa Bay's rolling and hitting my house well it's Tampa Bay mixed with sewer water it wasn't mm -hmm, just Tampa mm -hmm, Bay mm -hmm. and they the emergency room said he couldn't believe how many insect bites how many, um, because the insects are all forced out of their habitats mm -hmm. and they're just looking for a warm body. I'm learning all this now after I'm, you know, after I'm the one that has the infection. Um, and it's just, you just don't realize it. I see people move the barricades. I saw people d d knee boarding in the floodwaters and until it happens to you, you don't know how dangerous it is. You don't know how dangerous and painful it is because you just think it's bay water. And um, so I just wanted to mention that in case anybody didn't realize how dangerous it is, it's dangerous. And the, and, the, and the ERs were, they were even telling me. I mean, mine was more than likely a poisonous insect bite, the second infection that just got infected from the bacteria and all that good, you know, yeah. So I just wanted to thank the, thank the city for what they do for us and we need to start listening to us. <laughs> we need to start taking the advice of people that say don't do those things, so. That's it. And happy 4th of July to everybody. All right. Thank you, Council Member Beavis. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any much. Just uh, happy 4th of July to everybody. And, and uh, yeah, it was kind of a learning experience, that whole storm, definitely. The whole southwest wind and for three days. I don't know which is worse, that or a Cat 3 that just blows through quick. I, they said that constant wind really was what was getting us. But I'd just like to... Um, but is this back in 1998, Oldsmar Mayor Jerry Beaverlin vowed to have a sit-in, this is because now we've got red light cameras, sit-in to have at the governor's office if he didn't get a traffic light at 580 and Forest Lakes Boulevard. I just, uh, on behalf of Jerry Walters, who mentioned this at the last meeting, maybe you could call Scott and have a sit-in for Bay Arbor Boulevard in Tampa. Road. That's a good idea. <laughs> Gonna sit in, were you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's, it. That's not been that long ago. Well, that was that, that was a horrible intersection. 19 and 98, way back yep. then. Wow. Now look at us. <laughs> Almost got killed at that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me see that. Anything else? Oh, no, that's it. All right. Mr. Vice Mayor. Hilarious. The, uh, in 45 years we've lived here, in 45 years, I have, I have never seen the bay come up three times like it did in Debbie. Mm -hmm. The tide could not go out because of the winds. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, on top of that, down by just down by your house, uh, there there's something else you have to worry about in the bay. When we first moved here, 45 years ago, I'm not going to say exactly what I did, but there was a, a, a lot of moccasins from Moxon Creek would come down on the bay at the at the dog park. Really? And I would shoot them. Yes. Oh my word. I found a two and a half foot moccasin down on the seller's property. Really? This last flood? Yes. Oh! Yes. There's moccasins out there. Be very careful about being on the bay. What happened was they were they were being forced down out of the outfall canal. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, the street dedication was great. That was Beautiful good. street. I mean, it yeah. really is. It is. And staff and the mayor and, and Bruce did a great job down there. I mean, that is a beautiful street, uh, St. Petersburg Drive. Uh, I want, I'm, I'm going to be interviewed uh, Thursday from Bayview Nines on fishing in the bay, if you can believe that. <laughs> if anybody should be interviewed, it should be the mayor and the city attorney on fishing. Because <laughs> the vice mayor doesn't fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be interviewed <laughs> about fishing in the bay, and that's great. <laughs> and, I want, and I want to compliment the city clerk. Now, I went into the city clerk's office, and I told him I wanted a business card trimmed in gold. 
So the city clerk got three of my business cards, got a gold pin. She's funny. She's funny now. That was good. I I appreciate that. (laughs) These girls in our office really have great, great (laughs) senses of humor. uh, Have a great Fourth of July. God bless America. Yes. On our birthday. Now, from, from city staff, from the uh, citizens of Osmar, and from the council, council here sitting tonight, this is to you. To me? Oh, for Pete's sake! We have no idea. It is a picture of my late husband. That's that's the original. Oh, oh my gosh. Of my late husband. Right there. And oh, oh, there it is. Yes. And that was in 1974-ish. It's on the back. And that's you? Is that you? That is I, yes. Huh? What a beauty queen. How did you find oh, yeah. that? Pardon me? How did he find that? It was on eBay. Oh, so my So you're selling goodness. that on eBay? Somebody, somebody was selling it. So I bought it. You bought it? Out in the it. world did oh, you You didn't buy it from Ruben, did you? <laughs> Thank you so much. That's from the city of Oldsburg. What were you searching so for? What does he know on there? And how would he know it was Thank her? Thank you. You were quite the looker. Look at that. Not bad. <laughs> nice. Not bad. Get by. And uh, I and that's believe... That's the original article on the back, too. Yes. There's an article on the back, well, too. In other words, he's searching eBay for it Janice was... Miller. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually I, was, I was told about it in the planning department. No. Was it the planning department? Yes. Yes. It was the planning Marie. department. And they said it was on eBay because I check it all the time. But I, but this is not. This is Detroit. This is not Ozone. Yeah, no, we were in so, Detroit. So I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. And they told me about it. So I went on eBay and found it. And I actually bought it on the huh. on the computer down in the planning department. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. That's the city council. Uh, the city. Yes, getting I was. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Jerry. I this is. Yeah. Reads a lot to me. Thank you. That's why you have it. Thank you. Other than that, thank you all for who you are. Thank you very much. I would also echo your statements for Happy Fourth of July and God bless the United States. Um, just to touch on a couple of things that Jerry did. I want to remind everybody: the Guns of Hoses is this Saturday, eleven to three. It's the Blazing Challenge. And Andy and I will be the judge, the Mayor of Safety Harbor, and myself, and. Uh, we get to see these guys cry a little bit because these are blazing hot wings, and if they don't eat them, we're going to disqualify them and make them eat them. Um, and all the proceeds do go to uh, the Police Foundation, Oldsmar Cares, and Maddie's House. So three great charities, and uh, again, 11 to 3. I came across something pretty cool the other day that you would probably appreciate. I have somebody that's a friend of mine that has a 1902 Curved Dash Oldsmobile. Oh, really? That wants to sell it. They just had it refurbished. Really? And... I think if there's interest, we could probably get it for about three thousand, thirty-five hundred bucks. You're kidding! I'll and put it on the I'll put it on the agenda. Yeah. So I'll give him a buy it. <laughs> right here in Clearwater, he just you uh, mean to buy it for the city. Oh, took a year to get it restored. He was going to have it in the parade last um, uh, Oldsmore days, and uh, he needed a part that he couldn't get, so he had to fly a part in. He's now fixed it, refurbished the whole thing, and uh, oh, it's ready to go. It's, now, it's not an original. It's, it was yeah. built in, like, 1960. It's a replica like we've got now. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we've got a 1901, and yes. this would give us a 1902. Yes. For uh, not a, not even near as much money as we paid for the 1901. Yes. Right. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. Uh, put that as an agenda item. Yes. Okay. Yes. We can do that. Absolutely. And then um, do we have a meeting before the uh, the softball game? Just come with the ladder? We're meeting on the 17th, and I think that's That'd the be 14th, after. Yeah, so isn't it? This is on the 14th, Saturday, July 14th, Bright House Field, which is great. Um, this is us, the city of Oldsmar, the chamber, playing the uh, sheriffs. And it's only the community resource officers from each community that are playing against us this time. So the playing field might be a little bit leveler. And we've been having tryouts. Love to see you out there. Practice is Thursday at uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock each Thursday until the game. Um, and it's really a great deal. For 17 bucks, you get all you can eat, 
hot dogs, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, peanuts, popcorn, chips, ice cream sandwiches, soft drinks, bottled water, plus 16 ounce draft beers for just $2. And then at the end of the, sh at the, end of the game, at the end of our game, the Threshers play, but after the end of the Threshers game, there's about a 15 minute fireworks show, which is phenomenal. I was there uh, this Saturday and it went for about 15 to 20 minutes and it was one of the best fireworks shows I've ever seen. So cause again, it's going for the, uh, it's going for the uh, sh holiday sharing fund, which is great for our kids here in, in Safety Harbor. So uh, love to see you guys out there. And I have SB, but oh, SB is a softball, so I got that covered. <laughs> I don't have anything else. I need a motion for the tentative agenda. So moved. Do I have a second? Got a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Over. We're done.